And there's another in the fire standing next to me. And there's another in the fire holding back the... Oh, isn't that such a good song? Man, two things about that. Number one, that's why I don't lead worship and I sing out loud only in large crowds. But number two, phenomenal lyrics that we are basing this week and next week our daily dose on, realizing you're not alone. There's another in the fire. So we're going to take a little bit of a, a worship tone today and tomorrow. Today, teaching. Tomorrow, listening. I'll set that up tomorrow. For today, we're going to look at probably my favorite Psalms in the entire Bible and maybe my favorite passage. I don't know if you can see this at home. Can you see this at home? Can you see how much writing is on that page? Can you see how many times I've been here, wrote, scribbled, circle, highlight, underline? See, I practice what I preach. This Psalm is written by a guy named Asaph. Might not mean a lot to you, but he's the chief worship leader over all of Israel at this time. Think of that. God's people, God's nation, Jerusalem, the temple. He is the Andy Na. That's the name of our chief worship leader. He is the chief worship leader over all of Israel. So you think this guy's incredible spiritual, man. This guy leads worship. This guy's walking with God. And this guy forgot for a moment that there was another in the fire. This guy got wrapped up into all the culture and politics and all that was going on around him and almost lost his ministry and almost lost his spiritual joy. And he had the guts to write about it and put it into lyrics. So some 3,000 years later, you and I can read about it. It's Psalm 73. I'm gonna have to fly through this because it's long, but it starts like this. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I nearly lost my foothold. Yeah, I know God is good. I know God is sovereign. I know God has everything under his control, but I almost blew it. I almost lost it. Man, I started finding myself getting distressed and depressed and disappointed. Are you there right now? He goes, let me tell you how my perspective of life changed where my heart and my joy was. He says this, because I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, they have no struggles, their bodies are healthy, they're strong, they're free from all the burdens common to man. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. Evil conceits of their minds knows no limit. They scoff and speak with malice. In their arrogance, they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven. Their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people now turn to them and they drink up waters in abundance. And then they say, well, how can God know? Does the most high I have knowledge. This is what the wicked are like, always carefree and they're increasing in wealth. Do you hear the rant building up? He goes, let me tell you how I started to lose my soul, my spiritual joy, my walk with God. I started looking at them. I started looking at the world around me. How are they getting away with this? Why are they the ones that people are listening to? Why is that where wealth is going? How in the world are they living like that? 17 times, all you have to do is follow the pronoun. 17 times he says, they, there, they, they, there, they, there, there, they, there, they, there, 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 them, they, them. 17 pronouns. The first step to losing your foothold on realizing the God that's with you, start focusing on others. Start focusing on the political situation. Start focusing on what's going on with them and they and there. Consume yourself with nothing but CNN and Fox and social media. And I promise you, the more you digest that, the more your level of spiritual joy and contentment is going to start becoming depleted. This is from the chief worship leader saying, let me tell you how I almost lost my ministry, how I finished the song and walked off stage and realized I'm not in a good place right now. I was focusing on them. So what do you do when you get to a point where you start becoming distressed? That's right. You start looking at yourself. It's woe is me. And Asaph goes there. Surely in vain, I have kept my heart pure. In vain, I have washed my hands in innocence. All day long, I've been plagued. I've been punished every morning. If I said I would speak thus or I would do that, I would have betrayed your children. And when I tried to understand all this, it was oppressive to me. <laughs> From 17 times focusing on they and them and the world around us to now, I, I, my, I, 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 my, me. Circle, highlight, underline the pronouns of Psalm 73. I look at the world around me and I become distressed. Then I start looking at what I'm doing and why am I doing this and why am I going through this and where am I at? And I become incredibly depressed and I become disappointed. Are you there? I hate to leave you on that note. 
But we're out of time for today. And tomorrow I'm gonna to walk you through how to make sure you go from there to here. You see, Asaph will end up in a great place. He knew there was another in the fire. He forgot how to focus and walk with the God that was with him in the fire. He just focused on the flames and where he was in the flames. And if that's where you are in culture today, I promise you're one of two things. You're distressed or you're depressed. See, disappointment's gonna come in when you focus on them or me. Tomorrow the answer, it's a cliffhanger. You gotta tune in.